Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies for a little bit of a delayed start. We're just getting things sorted out. Um, I will give everyone a minute or two to get connected before we kick off. My name's Georgia. I'm from the Fashion for Good team, and I'm coming to you today from London. Thanks for tuning into our event, The Future of Fashion Lab Tour with Spinova. I hope everyone's keeping healthy and well, and thank you for joining us. We'll just wait a minute or two. Post in the chat where you're dialing in from. It's always nice for us to see um, where everyone is. So please do share. And throughout the webinar, please do post any questions you have into um, the Q&A. And if we don't get through them all today, we will try and um, follow up afterwards. We've got someone from Glasgow, someone from New Zealand. Fantastic. Finland, Germany, India, amazing. New York, France, Cape Town. Wow. Right. Hopefully it's uh, a little bit sunnier in Cape Town than it is where I am. <laughs> it's very <laughs> rainy. <laughs> it's pouring rain here also. <laughs> As well. Um, okay, fantastic. So usually we host these events in our um, HQ in Amsterdam and we like to start with um, running a poll to see who's in the room. So this should pop up now. If you could fill it out, that would be great and we'll give everyone a minute or two to complete the survey and then we can share the results. I can't vote but... Um, get voting. Great. Did everyone get a chance to? Okay. So we have 11% of people are students, 13% are working for a brand, 15% are working for a manufacturer. Then we have a range of people from the supply chain or NGOs, 20% are consultants. We have some innovators joining us today, um, as well as innovate individuals who are generally interested in the topic. So welcome everyone, thank you. Nice diverse background. I am pleased to welcome Yuha Salmeer, Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder, and Yana Poran, CEO and Co-Founder with me today. They have a background as paper and pulp scientists and initially conceived the idea of Spinova whilst researching nanocellulose at VTT Research Facility. Initially inspired by a talk about spider silk, Yuha began to explore how nanocellulose could also be spun into fiber. Today, they're going to be sharing insights into Spinova's process, as well as what the future holds for the company. A quick background on Spinova for those who aren't familiar. Spinova's groundbreaking innovation turns wood pulp into fiber without the use of harmful chemicals. These fibers can be recycled several times over and the entire process uses up to 99% less water than conventional cotton and 65% less CO2 emissions. Before we kickstart the tour and the Q&A, I wanted to give a quick background on Fashion for Good for those who aren't familiar. Fashion for Good is a global initiative that was set up to connect innovators and industry to drive commercial adoption of sustainable solutions at each stage of the supply chain. In our headquarters in Amsterdam, we house the Fashion for Good Experience, a public facing museum that showcases the groundbreaking innovations that are changing the fashion industry for good. It informs and educates visitors and helps them on their good fashion journey by showing them what changes they can make to have a positive impact. Alongside this, we have our innovation platform, through this, over the past three years, we have scouted over 2,000 startups from around the world, working with over 100 of them via our accelerator and scaling programs. We're really focused on supporting these innovators to enable strategic opportunities, such as pilot projects, with the aim of scaling up their solutions for widespread adoption in the industry. 
We work closely with our 18 corporate partners to help make this happen. So I'm very excited to be um, welcoming Yana and Yuha to take us on a tour of Spinova today. As I mentioned at the start of the webinar, please drop in any questions you have into the chat or the Q&A. And we have tried to capture and incorporate the questions you submitted ahead of time. So thank you everyone who did that. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to Yana and Yuha to kick off the tour. Okay, thank, thank you, Chosa. And first of all, I, I would warmly welcome all, all people around the globe to joining us today. So I, I think I should say even good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are at the moment. We are here at Yuvaskula. Here in Yuvaskula, we have a spin of us main location. In this building, we have all the labs, we have a pilot facility, we have offices, and about 30 people working at Spinova today. George was mentioning that we are mainly focusing to the paper pulp as a raw material, <coughs> but now at the beginning, I would like to remind that basically what we can use as a raw material is pretty much everything what is bio-based and mainly cellulose-based raw materials. We have some examples, for example, what we have done so far with the wheat straw, which is a one a very exciting and, and interesting opportunity. Okay, but next what we do, we, we can walk through the, through the offices, uh, we can go in, in first into the wet lab where Juha is explaining that how, how we do what we do. Then we are going into the, our, let's say, textile lab, even though that we are always saying that we don't know anything about the textiles. I mean, me and Juha at least. And, and that is the one, let's say, the It would like to work with the best global partners who are interested. In a very, let's say, in a good phase to take the next next move to the towards the commercialization. So please join us and then let's go to the, to the labs. So this building is actually the third location where we are uh, as a spin -off. We We started about five and a half years ago. We, we spinned off from VTT. We went into, uh, let's say, the old, old facility and, and then we built it everything from the scratch. Okay, now we have done that three times and, and now we are waiting the fourth time to happen. Here we have a small office. This kind of like an open office where people are working, mainly those people who are able to do something with computers. They are, they are taking this space. But then, then we are going into the, our wet lab it seems to be quite empty today. Okay. okay. But please, Juha, explain what, what we do. So, welcome on my behalf also. It's my great pleasure to really show you a little bit, a glimpse of, of our technology. Today, I'm, I'm going to show different steps what our raw material and products look like. So, please come. Closer. As Janne said, we start from wood pulp, uh, which is very important is that this is craft pulp. We don't do any dissolving chemistry. So we take the natural wood fiber and cook it to craft pulp. And then the first magic happens. We, with our unique uh, refining technique, Technology, we turn this, these long wood fibers 
to this kind of paste, which is called microfibrillated cellulose. Solid content of this is probably about 10%, almost like a gum. No one can spin anything out of this. We have uh, more than 30 patents protecting uh, the next step. How we turn this using Realogy into spinoma fibers. With here you can see a sample of our fibers. So we use uh, the microfib related cellulose, very, very advanced rheological modification and protective spinning, dry spinning technology to convert wood fiber without no using no harmful chemicals, no dissolving chemistry into textile fibers that are drop in product in any textile processes. In, in very, very short words, this is what Spinnova is doing. <laughs> and next, we'll go to our textile lab. Before we see... move into the textile lab, can I yes. ask you a couple of questions while we're here? Definitely. My um, pleasure. Can you explain how the um, suspension works? when it's extruded through the nozzles. How does that, how does that process yeah. work? <clears throat> Very good uh, and nice uh, question for me. So we have a few major, very, very important topics there. These natural fibers that can make up this uh, microfibrillated cellulose, they are made for maybe uh, nanometers or 100 nanometers wide, but very long we have to align them so that they are in the nozzle, they are side by side. So using the rheology and special nozzle geometry, we can put them side by side and, and uh, behind each other so that nozzle doesn't get blocked and the strength of this individual filament is very high. And Does you mentioned... this answer? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Thank you. And we have a question from the audience. Is the pulp transformed just through heat and water? Yes, exactly. Again, super good question. And I forgot to mention this. We, in our process, we have no side streams. So we don't mechanically remove the water. We just evaporate. So we use energy to evaporate the water and uh, recycle this evaporated water back to the refining process. So that, that's super important in our case. So everything we put to the suspension remains in the suspension unless it's evaporated. So no side stream, no waste waters other than evaporated water. So you mentioned at the start that microfibrillated cellulose is perhaps quite commonly um, seen across the industry. Yeah. So if you had to summarize um, in an elevator pitch, what makes Spinova so unique? Uh, we, we are unique because we don't do any dissolving chemistry. We don't use any harmful chemicals to turn natural fibers into uh, textile. And we really make the difference in global scale in the future of the uh, sustainable textile industry. Thank you. I'm just going to check if there's any more questions at this stage. Somebody Very has asked questions. if the um, pulp raw material has any specific requirements. So perhaps you could talk a bit more about the different feedstocks you can use. Yeah. Um, again, very different than in paper making. Wood species create totally different kind of products, but in our case, because we open the wood fiber structure into microfibrils that make up the wood fiber, it actually doesn't, it makes no difference if we use pine straw, uh, pine, uh, eucalyptus, birds, eucalyptus, any, any yeah, wood species. So that's unique also. So these microfibrils that can be extracted without chemicals, even from straw, make up exactly the same. Uh, currently, we don't see any, any uh, mm. changes. In the future, maybe we can optimize our product for straw and, and give different properties than 
or eucalyptus or birds, but but so far very very similar. Yeah. And then Please someone go. else has um, asked if the pulp is harvested from sustainable forests. So perhaps you could briefly explain about FFC certification. Yeah, FFC certification, and in our case, our partner. Susanna is, is actually exceeding FSC certification, but it, it means that no, for example, for us, one of the most important uh, aspect is that we don't cut uh, our wood is harvested so that no uh, natural forest is cut to uh, plant, for example, eucalyptus uh, trees and all the forest con uh, conservation work is done very very, very carefully, all the soil <laughs> nutritions are saved, so no error. Actually, this prevents erosion in those, those lands where it's used. FSC certification has many, many uh, details, but for us, these, I think, are the most important. And then one last question. Um, I think we touched on it, but I think it's also a good one. Does the input material need to be pre-treated, especially for your process? Mechanical refining is the pre-treatment, if, if you want to call that, but mm. no, no, no other treatments are no required. Chemicals. Yeah, no, no chemical. No so the normal, let's say the paper pulp is enough yeah. where okay. we start. And very important is the difference between dissolving pulp and craft pulp, what we use. So we've got also asking about other feedstocks outside of wood, if it could be used for agricultural waste yeah. or yeah. for hemp cellulose. Um, yeah. If it's cooked to uh, pulp, then hemp can yeah. be, be used. And then what we have internally tested, mm -hmm. what is, I, I would say, it, extremely interesting is that we have even used the cotton waste as yeah. some raw material. Yeah. So that it take an old t-shirt and, and then we are mechanically refining that into the microfib related cotton cellulose and, and then we are able to use our, our technique to spin uh, new, new cotton fiber out of that. Fantastic. I think we need to continue. Great, to let's move on to the next around. section. Yes, please. And then when, when walking I can a little bit open up that where we are at the moment. So these are our labs, and, but then behind the windows, we have also the pilot scale production facility. It was something what we invested in, in at the end of 2018. And, and now we have been running and optimizing the process about one year, one and a half year. And production capacity is already the big enough so that we can produce enough fibers for our brand partners so that they, they are developing together with us the first commercial application. And, and now the next big step is of course that we are at the moment in the States that we are planning the first commercial investment in, in, into the bigger production volumes. And I hope that this will take place in, in, in very soon. Mm -hmm. Okay, but here now, now we are in our textile lab and we actually invested into the, I would say almost the best what we were able to find tools that we are able to test that how our fiber is behaving in the, in the real textile uh, applications. So this is, this is our product. Uh, as, as you can see, it is the continuous filament. Uh, at this point, we are not yet using this as a continuous filament, but of course in the future, that is the target. But now what we do is that we are cutting this filament into the staple fibers. For example, normally about the 40 millimeters long. And, and then in this textile lab, what we have, is that we, we have, for example, the normal small scale pilot scale carding machine so that we can cart the staple fibers. Then we have a bin drafter so that you are 
producing this kind of free yarn, which is something like that when it is coming out of the pin tractor. So as you see, all of the fibers are aligned. And then next you can go into the normal, normal yarn spinning, which is that machine. It, it is not running at the moment because it is quite noisy, but it is something what you can find in all, all the textile yarn spinning mills. And then we are able to spin the real yarn, what we are then testing that how the yarn is behaving, for example, in the, in the knitting. Over there, we have a small knitting device. And so that in, in almost in the same day, but at least in the next day, when we have tested something in our pilot, for example, that we have changed a little bit the recipe or we have changed something in the raw material, then in the next day we are able to knit the small sample and look at how it is behaving. And, and that has been the key that we have everything in our own hands that we can be fast in our development cycle so that we can look at what is working and what is not working. Maybe something to look also is that always people are asking that how you are testing, for example, your fibers. Uh, do you know that what are the mechanical properties, for example? So here we have a normal, let's say standard mechanical testing. So what we do that when we have these trials in the pilot scale, in every trial point, we are taking the samples and we are measuring the properties of the fibers. I think that today we have already measured something like 50,000 different uh, uh, points. So we have a little bit already the information that what is working and what is, what is affecting on what way to the properties of the, of the final fiber. So this investment, I would say that has been extremely important for us because as you know, and now we have seen this spring that if, if you are too much relying to the partners and then if something happens, there is a big delay. And then we have been very efficient also during this spring. Is there, you have something what you would like to add? No, before? I think uh, you explained this, this very well. So, so we call this our agile uh, development process. So from recipe to the fabric in one or two days without leaving the factory anytime. So it's, it's very unique. And yeah. in our all work, we, as I hope it, it uh, can be seen also here and our pilot looks the same. So, so we want to make, show the quality. We want to make sure that everyone has good uh, working practices and, and environment and we, we want to make sure about these and qualities yeah. is very, very important for us and transparency and how we can monitor our fiber development. Yeah. But maybe these products. Yeah, let's look. To... Can I ask you a quick question that we've, uh, that has come sure, through? What blends can you make and what, what materials do you blend yeah. your fiber with? Yeah. So, so far we have, let's say, tried and, and made a trials with almost all the most common fibers. So we have made a blend with cotton fibers. We have made a blend with the man-made cellulosic fibers. We have made blends with wool fibers and, and even the synthetic polyester fibers. And, and as, as you understand, you know more about the textiles, of course, it is, there are thousands of different applications. And now we have decided that we will look quite a wide spectrum that where our fibers are behaving best what comes to the properties of the end product. And then here we have actually a couple of examples about the fabrics, what we have made. I think that the black one is, is blended with wool. Uh, I think this one is 100% uh, spinova of I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Then this is maybe something with, with the wool also. 
that one is a little bit more like a denim type of fabric. Not, not ready yet, but it, it is blended with the cotton. And dyed. And dyed also. And, and then, then something like a normal hand knitting wool blend. So there are many, many applications and we have made already, I think, tens of different demonstrations. And, and also look, for example, the non-woven applications, uh, composite applications, something for the insulation, for example. Uh, we have measured, uh, or the third partner has measured that, for example, the insulation property of our fiber is as good as the normal lamb wool, which is very interesting and exciting opportunity to look that kind of in, uh, applications that where, where the insulation is, is the key. Yeah. And there's some questions around the fiber properties, which I don't think you can share probably today, but <laughs> perhaps it's worth um, just what you would test your fiber against. That was one of the other questions, you know, what properties are you looking for um, when yeah, we, developing we all, your fiber? All, always, uh, starting from the uh, beginning of the process we uh, first of all measure everything so we know when when one fiber leaves the factory we know the mechanical properties wet and dry and and th those are always then um, with those numbers we have uh, e everything all the recipes and process conditions live or, or with the fat uh, fabric also but then uh, we measure if we make a yarn, also uh, hairiness and, and mechanical properties of the yarn. Uh, um, Martindale for the fabric, washability for the fabric. These are all uh, something that we have in house, and then some some dusting properties, uh, etc. So, so those are in house uh, measurements. But then we get uh, from our spinning mill, we are using. Uh, one uh, Italian, mostly one Italian uh, ring spinning mill. They, from there we get uh, many results. And then if needed something else, uh, we have good partnership with uh, universities and uh, research institutes and textile uh, experts. So there was a question around if it's a fiber or yarn and the answer is that actually you do have samples of different yarns that are blends with other materials. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And then one of last course, question. May, you go. Uh, maybe something to add is that of course mainly we are looking at where we are compared to the for example cotton yeah. fibers or the for example viscose fibers. And then what comes to the mechanical properties, I, I would say that we are already in a quite a good level. So that we have seen that you are able to use commercial spinning into the yarn you are able to use the commercial knitting or, or woven to make 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 a fabrics and the then weaving. one last question before we go back in the other room what makes your product circular um i i think it is quite quite easy as i mentioned that if, if we for example take a old t-shirt made out of the cotton <laughs> We can make a new new cotton fiber out of that, but then when when you have a spin of fiber in your fabric, if it is for example, one hundred percent spin of our ore, even that it is blended with cotton, we can take back that in into the, our mechanical refining process and make the fabric into the microfibrillated cellulose again, and and then we are able to spin it. Yeah, and so that doesn't require any chemicals either. Yes. Yes. So, and, and then what we have internally tested already is that the quality is, is not going down, but actually when we are recycling our fibers only, the quality is even a little bit improved. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that is all also, of course, extremely exciting. That is very exciting. I think particularly to see how the fiber can loop back into itself. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank and you then, for that okay. tour. Are we going back in the other room? Yes. Yeah. Let's go to the uh, hallway and then. Um,
I think that then we are ready for the more questions and we can we can start to discuss about the more details about our plans. I spy a few products there. Could you tell us a bit more about those? Um, yeah, here, here on the uh, left side, we have just in-house built, uh, made uh, our textile expert, uh, Mary Hamilton, who joined us from New Zealand. We are super happy about that. She uh, has done, done uh, this, this uh, dress or whatever you call it. And, and this is done together with Marimekko. Finnish uh, fashion brand, as you always, or, or everyone knows. So, so uh, we are very happy about uh, these cooperations. And also, perhaps um, your belts are they uh, made from spinover material? Yeah. Yes. yes, they are. <laughs> yes, and I've been so, wearing this for a year. Now. Yeah, me too. So uh, it, it is also the, quite a. Yeah, exciting that we have actually used our products already and they, they seem to behave <laughs> quite nicely. This is getting just better and better. A little bit color from the jeans, but, <laughs> but it's just amazing. I really like it. Yeah. I should Fantastic. maybe wash my jeans sometime. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's been lots of questions about what happens in the dyeing process. And I know you recently announced a partnership with Chimera. Can you explain how this dyeing process works and what makes it sustainable? I'll, I'll try. Uh, <laughs> as you know, as you know, we are, we are physicists, so we don't know anything about the chemistry either. But yes, but with, with Chimera, of course, the collaboration has been great since we are quite close to the paper making anyhow and Chemira is one of the best companies in the what comes to the paper paper making and the additives and the chemicals to use in the paper making and and now the main uh, idea what we do and what we are working with uh, with Chemira is that we are we are dyeing our fibers I mean the microfiber related fibrils before we are spinning that in, into the textile fiber. So then all the, all the suspension is dyed already before the yarn spin or the fiber spinning. And, and on that way, we believe that you can save huge, huge amount of water. You can save huge, huge amount of the chemicals. And, and then, then for example, in, in denim applications, uh, I would say that it, it is quite a unique concept for the future when we are successful with that one definitely okay um and then there was a question about there's been a few questions about if you recycle fibers from old clothing how do you get rid of the dyes so maybe um if you can just clarify a bit more information about the feedstocks and how you would get rid of like I think there was also a question about paper pulp, removing inks, a bit more information on that. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. That is the simple question. We are, we are not that far yet with, with the, to, to use, for example, the old clothes with dyed fibers with different raw materials, but it is something what we are currently working, but, but at this point we don't know yet. And I don't think it's, it's any different than in any other textile recycling industry. If someone has a sustainable solution, how to get rid of the dyes, it works for us. It, mm. how, how the yeah. dye bonds to our fiber is exactly the same as, as for cotton, for example. Fantastic. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about your um, commercial roadmap to scale up. How will you scale up? Someone asked, I think perhaps they missed the intro, if you were only doing this small lab scale volume. So I just want to clarify that Spinova do have a big facility. It's just that we weren't able to go into the big facility, but you saw the baby version of the big facility. Um, yeah. But perhaps can you talk more about your yeah, scale up plans? Um, yeah, it, it is pretty straightforward. 
So as I mentioned already that we have been in the, let's say, in the industrial scale piloting scale already almost one and a half years. We have been optimizing our process and we will do that also in the, in the next year. But now we are already in the, inside the planning that we are going to go into the first, let's say, the commercial scale as soon as possible. And, and then it means that the scales are already that big that we, we can really work uh, together with the partners and the brand owners. They can really put first commercial products in, in, into, the, into the market. And so and we hope that this will happen as soon as possible. So in our internal plans, it means that in, in two years, we should be already in that, that scale that we are, that the new, new investment is up and running. Lots of, yeah, few questions about when people can purchase their own Spinova products. So watch this space and hopefully um, within the next couple of years. Yeah, yeah. It, then there's a question about um, what happens to your fibers at the end of life. Could you talk more about that, please? Yes, uh, it's, it's, it has two sides. If it's blended with uh, something uh, difficult, let's say polyester, in, in, uh, for example, then, then we really want to separate polyester from our fiber and, and use two different recycling roads. And, and we have very good plans for that. But uh, when, whichever uh, way we do this uh, separation first, we re recycle our fi fibers back, as Janne previously mentioned. We recycle it back to our refining process. And that's not even recycling, it's upcycling. So we do exactly the same refining using actually less energy and uh, re-spin it and, and so far the, these cycles what we have done so far the quality of the material raw material improves so so we get more and more better microfib related cellulose and and we can re-spin it and that that's that's basically it also um by your we are very concerned that our fiber must uh, be biodegradable in marine and uh, anaerobic and anaerobic conditions and compostable. And we have done all these uh, measurements. And also, if and we know that all, some fabrics always go to landfills or, or uh, they are badly used. So, so our fiber is super nice in that sense that that it biodegrades in each conditions faster than reference cellulose. And there's a question over um, why the fibers are white and could they be another color? But I think we've captured that with the different dye processes. But if there's anything else you'd like to add there. Yeah, you can basically dye our fiber whatever ever color. Uh, and then of course we have been or have you used the same, same dyeing process, for example, what you are using in the cotton industry. So in that sense, because it is cellulose and yeah, this is a good example that this, this was made out, out of the wheat straw. And then, then of course the color as a natural is, is a little bit different than with the, with the craft pulp, what we are now focusing. Yeah, it's, it's actually difficult to get unbleached pulp. So, so we are happy to use this kind of material that is uh, not bleached. Actually, that also improves those, those hemicelluloses that are left. Uh, it seems that they, they just improve our properties. And, and this kind of, we really like this kind of natural colors. So, so in the future, I hope that we can get our material either white, so bleached, or, or in, in some products, uh, this kind of natural color, uh, which again improves the sustainability aspect. And there's a question um, around what's the biggest barrier you faced when you're marketing this new material to companies? I know we've spoken about this a lot, so I'd be interested to get your insights. Uh, 
I think nowadays it, it's extremely easy for us to discuss with the brand owners. Uh, at least we have this kind of feeling that the sustainability is, is in focus at the moment. And, and almost all the brands, they are looking something better what they are using by today. Of course, then the next discussion is that what, what is the quality, what is the plans for the scaling up. And I, I think that those are the next steps what we have to take, especially for the scaling up. We have already seen that there are many applications available where people can use our fibers. Uh, so I would say that now next we, we just have to do it. We have to go into the big scale and we have to show that, that we can put our fibers available. But what we are claiming and what we are saying is that then it, it is really the most sustainable fiber what we know uh, at, at this point. And yeah, we are, yeah. You go. And we are. Uh, it's obvious that currently uh, it's still uh, not um, the world's uh, most uh, finest yarn or fiber. But it's also, for example, today it was so nice to see mm. in our R and D facility we made the finest yarn ever or filament ever, and we are going towards finer and finer, and and we just take these steps one at a time. So, so we know and our partners know uh, what this fiber currently is good for and, and in the future, no one knows. Yeah, that, that was a good point. And we, our, our culture is that we are trying to be as open as possible. We are also trying to be quite a realistic. So we are not claiming that we are able to produce the finest and the strongest fiber by today and, and not, not even in the future. But what we are promising to do is that we are producing this kind of fiber that it is good enough that you can use it, uh, for example, against the cotton or, or some other man-made or man-made cellulosic fibers. And, and we, then what we are claiming is, as I said, that we believe that it is the most sustainable fiber. So there is of course this kind of balance that what is the quality and, and what, what are the other aspects what you can offer. And from a hand feel perspective, what would you say, I suppose this is dependent on the blends, but what would you say commercially available material it most feels like? I, I would... <laughs> We don't know anything about textiles, but I would say that it, it, feels, it feels natural. That is the first, actually, the comment what we have been hearing from the brand owners and from the textile experts, that it is not feeling synthetic at all. It is feeling natural. It is a little bit coarse, but then when you are using that as a fabric, they are also saying that, that the feeling is, is quite a unique. It is a little bit like a linen, it's a little bit like a, like a cotton. And someone is even saying that as a fabric, for example, blended with, with cotton, the feeling is, is some, somehow close to the, even the synthetic fabrics. Yeah. So it's hard to say. I, I would say that it, it is totally new fiber. It is quite unique. But the most important is that it is feeling natural and it is natural fiber because it, it is not modified chemically. Yeah. And then there's a few questions around what's the biggest challenge that you found in terms of scaling up your technology? That's a hard one. <laughs> I don't know. At, at, at this point, we are, we are trying to find the money. We are trying to find a financing for the for the next investments to be very, very open. Uh, I, I think that we can do it. Uh, we have, a, I would say, the best partner at the moment, Susanna. And, and together with, with them, we are really going forward and we are, we are able to scale it up. So yeah, I mean, that's quite a normal for the startup, that it, it is always that you are, you are trying to look, look new financing and when you have found it, then, then you can be happy like one minute and then you are starting to look again. 
but then on the technology side it's uh it's very difficult to say because because our <coughs> team is is best in the world we we whenever we have a um uh, if everything goes really well as it happens very uh, every now and then we have no problems it's we our team is much better when we we have some some problem that we have to solve our our people solves all those problems so fast so so uh, of course we have small things small steps to take but i don't really mm. see that there is a re, uh, from this scale to industrial scale anything that, that that i'm very afraid of on the technology side and especially with this great team that we have in spinnova and our partners so it's not just spinnova we have gathered around us amazing uh, partners around the world and around finland so 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 we have everything from this uh, textile end to uh, raw material end and and engineering in between mm. to make this this really big very fast and i think as you say we we released a report with bcg at the end of last year that was around the start of this year financing the transition to sustainable textile industry and for these hard tech innovations it is as you say about raising the the capital to be able to build out new facilities that can then produce these different um fibers and yarns um mm. but it's exciting to see even over the last few years how much um and you you touched on that mindsets are changing where innovation departments now exist within fashion brands and i think it's really becoming um at the forefront of people's agendas which is really yeah. great to see yeah yeah that's right um there are quite a few questions on price so i don't know if there's any information you can share on where you envisage perhaps not now but at scale um it being from a price perspective and um, yeah of course we can share that one but um i have been keep saying in that way that for example that you you think that our partner is susanna and, and they are producing i think about 11 million tons of paper pulp every year and now together with them we have a plan that okay we will go for the textiles and we will go for the high and then higher value products and of course we understand that when you are in the big big scale so that you are producing let's say millions of tons of fibers you have to be about in the same level what comes to the price as for example what the cotton is is by today we are not there yet but but together with them we believe that we can be there in the future and i think as you say these things take time you're trying to compete against fibers that have been scaled up for exactly. 70 plus years so i think sometimes people <laughs> also have to understand that it takes a while for these things to get to um commercialization that's um, very important yeah Yes, um, this is a little bit different <laughs> business than the software business, for example, or the gaming industry. There's That's a question right. around what's the official name of your fiber? Um, when do you plan on launching some more information around that? Uh, it's ongoing. I, I hope that maybe maybe at the beginning of next year, we will have a have a brand at the name and the, and the everything ready for the for for that one. Okay. Okay, just give me a second. I'm just going through to see if we've um 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 if there's anything else that we can um touch upon. So I think perhaps just to recap because people some people joined later on in the talk. Perhaps we can close out with thinking about um what techno like spinovers like USP is and what most excites you about the technology and, and from an environmental impact perspective, the key impact hotspots that Spinova's um, process helps to address. That would be great. 
I think um, those the last one is is really really easy. So so we want to make a difference by replacing uh, in some applications oil based materials, so polyester mainly, and uh, then replacing cotton in as much as possible. Everyone knows what is the uh, land use, water use, its uh, pesticides, etc. And, and we really want to uh, free that land for uh, food production. So, so th those are the things. And, and then, then at least for me, the driver, what I really want to see in, in, in doing this is that, that the uh, raw material base of textile industry really changes and towards sustainable direction. Thank you. And I, um, I'm definitely so excited about Spinova and the innovation that you have. Um, I, I actually was one of the very lucky people that managed to get their hands on one of the backpacks that you made with Bergens. And, yeah, that's, um, that's yeah we, we have it in our experience. So if anyone ever finds themselves in Amsterdam or would like to do a digital tour, you can actually um, see the Spinova backpack in our museum, which, um, which we really love. So right. Um, right. before I wrap up, are there any last words from either of you that you'd like to um, share before I close out the session? I think that we are trying to say that we are very open for, for all kinds of collaborations. Uh, even though that we believe that, that today we have already the great, great partners, great investors, great team around us. All the time we are looking at how we can do things better. And, and we, we don't believe that we can do it alone. We, we need all the brand owners, we need all the textile expertise. We, we need a new people to join us. By the way, we are looking to new people all the time at the moment. So if, if you know that anyone would like to join Spinova, so please give a hint. But I, I, I think that the main message is that if you feel that this is something interesting for you and you would like to discuss in more detail, we are always open for, for this kind of discussions and making, making it happen, not, not just for to discuss. And um, I would like to say thank you to both of you and the rest of the Spinova team that I know have been uh, puppeting in the Amy. background, making it all happen. Um, so thank you also to Emmy, Lotta, and everybody else who helped make it happen today. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was yeah, really fantastic you. to be able to be um, welcomed into your facility. And I think um, a, an amazing opportunity to also talk with you both on the topic. So um, thank you very much. And thank you, thank Fashion you. for good. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Tosha. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get through all of your questions. Some of them were pretty meaty, potentially um, the kind of uh, bread and butter of um, Spinova's technology. So I think there are fantastic ones there. As a quick reminder, the Fashion for Good Museum is now open every day, except for Tuesdays from 11 a.m. And you can buy tickets online through our website at fashionforgood.com slash tickets. Um, also digital tours available. So if you'd like to see the Spinova backpack, then definitely um, sign up to those. We'll also be launching our next museum theme, which is going digitally for the first time. Everything's digital now, fantastic. So join us on July the 16th to learn about A Cut Above and hear from a range of brands that feature in the theme. You can also get access to an exclusive zero waste pattern as part of signing up to the event. So. As always, you can find out about all of these events on our website and also sign up to our newsletter. And you can also learn more about Spinova via their website. Um, they also have a fantastic newsletter, sign up in the right hand corner of the web page. And um, there were questions around job postings. And as you both said, you're constantly hiring and expanding the team. So Sign up um, online if you want to hear more about any opportunities that might arise. And to close out, I would like to say thank you to you both. Much appreciated. And um, yes, feel free to reach out. I think Nicholas shared the details in the chat. 
if you want to be in touch with them and otherwise enjoy the rest of your day. Good night to those who are um, going to bed or good morning to those who joined us um, who just woke up. And um, thank you very much for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.